from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good Tuesday morning. It's 5.30. Welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Victoria Hill. Thank you so much for getting your day started with us. And good morning to Miller over in the Weather Center. Here to tell us uh, what's yet to come after yesterday's rain. Got some good uh, ground moisture and sure. uh, mud built up. We made oh, mud pies no. in the backyard yesterday. Did you? Yeah, okay. It was fun. Well, we had a good time. Were <laughs> yeah. they tasty? That's the big thing. No, oh, yeah, we didn't go that far. The dog <laughs> did, but we did not. A little ketchup never hurts. Okay. Well, you know, uh, yesterday well, we did see the moisture, but that should be about it over the course of the next several days. Although there is a slight chance tomorrow. So slight. In fact, I didn't really put any chances in and I'll, I'll explain what that's all about coming up here with the main forecast in just a bit. We got the super pink moon that's playing peekaboo uh, this morning behind those clouds as you can take a look across Billings, courtesy the Stockman Bank weather cam 37 at the airport. Humidity at 86%. The dew points uh, holding steady at 33. Winds out of the west at about 3 miles an hour. Just take a look around. For the most part, we're looking at clear skies except southern parts of uh, Montana, northern Wyoming, where we still have the clouds and some of that rain and snow. Big Timber at 36. Forsyth at 39. We've got Hardin at 34. Clark at 35. Over in Gardner, a little cooler at 29. Highs today we will get into uh, around 60 in Livingston, uh, 60 for Harlington. How about Roundup getting up to about 63? Aberdeen Hill double fives at 55 and Cali up to about 60. We'll go 63 here in Billings this afternoon, pretty much on target where we should be and we're only getting warmer. In fact, by Friday, Victoria, we could be flirting with some record warmth getting into the low 80s. How about that? All right, just waiting for something a little more steady so we can get the garden started in sure. the backyard. Got those seedlings going. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to wait, I think, until like close to the end of May. Okay, Even that, might, you're be promising a, that might be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, a little <laughs> yeah. roller coaster there, yeah. sure. <laughs> exactly. All right, Miller, thank you so much. I'll uh, get on to the day's news. Okay. Our top story this morning, the body found in the van abandoned by the two suspects in last Friday's standoff belonged to an innocent man who was likely just trying to help. A Wyoming woman says it was her husband who was killed in that series of crimes that began Friday afternoon. Q2's Janelle Slade talked with the wife of 33-year-old Denny Gresham. Megan Gresham says she hopes her husband wasn't scared or in pain for long. But she also says she's going to find out. And then we went to dinner, had a great dinner at Smith Alley Brewing Co. And um, played games with the kids and had fun. He buckled them in and um, smooshed goodbye. Megan Gresham, of course, not realizing it was the last time they'd say goodbye. It was very within character for him to leave at 2.30 in the morning in his adventure mobile van. Although authorities have not released details surrounding this case, Megan says there is surveillance video from a Billings campground of Denny pulling in around 4.30 a.m. He wanted to get there early so he could get a full day of work in before he picked up Brendan Anders our friend from the airport in Billings. She says the video shows a man and woman approaching her husband's van about an hour later, first talking to him through the window, then getting in and driving off. I'm sure he was helping them, is my best guess. I don't know the details, and I, I want the details, but I don't have them right now. He's not dumb. I mean, he wouldn't have picked up a hitchhiker or something like that, but... I'm sure they came up and said, we just got to get to the gas or something. I don't know what the story is. And that lady who they have in custody, I'm going to find out. I'm going to tell her she's going to tell me every detail of what happened to Denny. Megan says Denny did not show up on his 7 a.m. virtual call with work. But she says she wasn't worried until he did not pick up their friend at the Billings Airport six hours later. And at that point, I was scared because there, there's no way he wouldn't have made it to the airport. So Megan and friends started calling hospitals and law enforcement. And they were kind of saying, well, we're going to try and ping his phone for the location. Meanwhile, there were SWAT teams and a helicopter flying over my van, the van. They knew where the van was. Megan says she finally learned of the crime spree and standoff in Billings late Friday night. The article with the photos of the van, it was all crunched up and I crumpled on the floor and I, I knew, he, I just wailed, he's dead. I know, I know. The Greshams have two little boys, one five and the other almost three. Megan says her husband loved his kids more than anything in the world. In Billings, Janelle Slade, MTN News.
The suspect shot by police tried to injure multiple houses on Ridgewood Lane and one resident in the area had a close call. Kim Bopel said she heard a helicopter hovering over her home. She ran upstairs and locked herself in the master bedroom, but then she remembered her doors were unlocked. Bopel ran back downstairs and locked the doors, barely missing a potentially dangerous interaction with the suspect. Since it all has happened, it's probably been scarier. I was downstairs rewatching the video, realizing that literally, I'm, I'm talking like just a couple, like probably three seconds or two seconds difference from when I locked the door, from when his hand was on the door, um, when, I, when I looked at this video, because I was watching my shadow through, through the different videos. And so I was that close. And I'm, I'm so grateful that I heard the helicopter, because had I not have heard the helicopter, both my doors were open. And it, and it could have been a lot different for me. Authorities have not released the name of the suspect who died after the standoff or the woman who was with him. Well, new this morning, at least one person is dead following a fatal crash in Lodge Grass. The accident happened around 1.30 this morning at the intersection of George Street and Hester Avenue. So far, no other details about the crash, including how it happened or how many people were involved, have been released. In other news, Billings massage parlors are now officially under new regulations. The city council passed an ordinance last night that aims to get rid of illegal sex businesses disguised as massage parlors. Officials say there are more than 12 of these in Billings right now. The ordinance requires massage business owners to get a specific license from the city. It also allows city code enforcement to inspect a massage business if complaints are made. Well, it's official. Montana will have more representation in Congress. The U.S. Census Bureau announced the state will be getting a second seat in the House for the first time since 1993. MTN's Jonathan Imbarian takes a look at what the new seat will mean for the state. For nearly 30 years, Montana has been by far the most underrepresented state in the U.S. House of Representatives, with too many people for a single representative, but not enough for a second. Now, the U.S. Census Bureau says that's going to change. The Census Bureau said Monday that Montana will be among six states gaining seats in the House starting in 2023. Montana's population grew almost 10 percent from 2010 to 2020. State leaders made a big push to encourage people to fill out the census, knowing a higher population would mean more federal funding and possibly more representation. Dr. David Parker, a political science professor at Montana State University, says it's hard for Montana's at-large congressmen to get everywhere in the state, so having two House members will be a big change. We're going to get more intimate representation. You're going to see your House member a lot more, and I think that's just good for the representative process. Now, the State Redistricting and Apportionment Commission, a bipartisan panel, will be tasked with drawing the boundary between the two congressional districts. The first elections would be in 2022. While a lot will depend on where that line goes, Parker said it's likely one district will be more solidly Republican and the other could be more competitive. Monday's release only included the overall state population. More detailed information at the local level may not be available until August or September. And that's what the districting commission needs to finish their work. Honestly, the redistricting, redistricting committee is going to have to move fast. The other thing that's going to be really a challenge is if you're a prospective congressional candidate, you know, thinking about running for office, you're probably going to have to start raising money and making an announcement before those lines are clear. However, Monday's announcement might not be the final word on congressional apportionment. States that lost seats could file legal challenges over the census methodology. But Parker says because Montana wasn't the last state to get an extra seat, it's less likely that action will affect us. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. And Montana's only congressman right now, Republican Matt Rosendale, welcomes the additional seat. He said having another member in our delegation makes us that much more powerful, and it means we will have representation on more committees that are important to our state. In Helena, Governor Greg Gianforte signed a trio of bills to restrict abortion in Montana. Two of the laws ban abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy and greatly restricts the distribution of abortion-inducing drugs. A third law says any woman considering an abortion must be given the chance to view an ultrasound of the fetus. In addition to being a beautiful day here in Montana, it's a promising day. A day that will go down in our state's history as we defend life. Today, we are taking action to protect the most vulnerable amongst us, the unborn. We are celebrating life. 
And I'd like to thank the countless individuals who have made today possible. Previous Republican majority legislatures have passed similar bills in the past, only to see them vetoed by a Democrat governor. Opponents of the law say they violate Montana's strict right to privacy and have promised to file suit to overturn them. One of the major bills of the 2021 legislature to implement recreational marijuana in the state had a roller coaster ride in the Montana House. Members initially voted to reject House Bill 701 and send it to a conference committee where a half dozen lawmakers would try to fashion a bill acceptable to conservatives who voted against it. But about an hour and a half later, the bill's sponsor asked the House to reconsider its action, and they did. That means the compromise bill will be back before the House today for another attempt to pass it and send it on to the governor. Some of the members opposed to the bill say it does not safeguard the public or properly direct tax revenue from marijuana sales. Well, now let's take a look at some of today's top national news. Protests continue in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, following the fatal shooting of a black man by sheriff's deputies. On Monday, body camera video of the incident was shown to the family of Andrew Brown Jr. Their attorney said they only saw a single 20 second clip. They are calling for the release of all recordings of the event. The effort to recall California's Democrat Governor Gavin Newsom is moving forward. Organizers who say he's poorly performing submitted a petition with more than 1.6 million signatures on it. That's about 100,000 more than required and enough to trigger a recall election in the fall. A new poll shows 53% of likely voters approve of how Newsom is handling his job. Only 4 in 10 likely voters said they would vote to remove him in a recall, while 56% said they would vote no. Vaccinated Americans could have new guidance from the CDC on wearing masks by the end of today. It could be another benefit of getting the vaccine as health officials continue to urge everyone to get their shots. Overseas, the focus is on India, where an explosion of cases is putting the nation under duress. CBS's Laura Podesta has details. The CDC is expected to come out with new guidelines for mask wearing today. The risk of infection outside um, is really minimum. If you're vaccinated and you're outside, it's even less. So what we're gonna be doing through the CDC is soon, very soon, clarifying the situation vis-a-vis -vis masks in vaccinated versus unvaccinated people. More than 28% of the country is fully vaccinated against COVID-19. You don't even have to get out of your car. It's now so easy to get these vaccines. But about 5 million people never went back for their second dose. A lot of people have stronger reactions in the second dose than the first dose. And that's because your body is actually building immunity to the virus. And that's why that second dose is really important to get. The White House says it will share its stockpile of the AstraZeneca vaccine with the rest of the world once it passes an FDA safety check. Given the strong portfolio of vaccines that the United States has already authorized and available in large quantity, and that is available in large quantities, we do not need to use AstraZeneca in our fight against COVID over the next few months. The U.S. and other nations also pledged oxygen and other supplies to India, the world's current coronavirus hotspot. The situation in India is beyond heartbreaking. India reported more than 2,800 deaths on Monday, and many intensive care units are operating at full capacity. Laura Podesta, CBS News. President Biden is set to give an update on the state of the pandemic here in the U.S. later today. Now closer to home, a Billings father and son were thankfully uninjured when a tree came crashing through the roof of their central Billings home. The accident happened over the weekend in a tree removal gone wrong at the neighbor's home. The master bedroom of the house at 1405 12th Street West took a major hit from a 50 foot tall tree trunk on Sunday. Officials say if you need to hire a tree trimmer, make sure they're licensed and check up on their references. And in lighter news, you can catch and keep as many fish as you'd like at Lake Elmo this summer. Limits will be officially lifted on May 1st as wildlife officials prepare to completely drain the lake in October. Lake Elmo will be left dry the entire winter in order to eradicate the invasive Asian clams that were found in 2019. The lake will be refilled in April of 2022 and restocked with several species of fish. Anglers will still have to get a valid fishing license to fish at Lake Elmo.
And if that doesn't entice you to cast a line in Lake Elmo, this might. A new state record catch was recently pulled out of its waters. Brandon Wright reeled in this nine and a half pound largemouth bass on Saturday morning. That's nearly a full pound heavier than the previous record, which stood since 2009. Wright said he plans to have the fish mounted by a taxi.